So we're going to start off um, at the beginning, I guess, which is uh, if you could talk about some of the basics of deaf awareness. Yeah, I would say that the number one thing um, is to say is that there's a huge variation within the deaf community. You have deaf people, deaf people, hard of hearing, deaf blind people, etc. And they all therefore don't have the same needs. They're all so varied within themselves. Mm -hmm. So we can't just solve everything with a BSL interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, yeah, 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 love it. <laughs> Although most things, you can solve most things with a good BSL interpreter. Yeah. Um, so what, what, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> what are then some of the kinds of access that people would need? So you have BSL interpreters, you also have captions, um, you have the other one which is called speech to text, like note takers, electronic note takers. And um, you can have a hearing aid loop system that people would use the T um, <laughs> part of their hearing aids to, to use that. There's so many other different kinds of access. Not everybody <laughs> can sign, obviously, so uh -huh. you know so, they have to meet all the, the different needs. So like printed materials as well. And microphones. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, the big ones that people will get up and say, I don't need the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, I think it's quite important um, that material is printed in an easy-to-read format mm -hmm. um, because things aren't going to be as accessible if they're not in um, mm -hmm. simplified English. I started learning BSL, I think, when I was about 10. So prior to that, I, well, I, I was still beginning to learn sign, but really written English was, was, was my main language. Mm -hmm. But even then, I wouldn't have access to the jargon and understand mm -hmm. um, you know, any specific area mm -hmm. of, 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 of language. And I hate the, I hate the, the words I'm saying simple English. I don't mm -hmm. want to say simple English, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean. Plain yeah. English. Yeah, you sort of touched on this uh, just now, and we've talked about it in the conversation that there's a real lack of information that reaches deaf people, especially people who are primarily BSL users. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yes, I think. For example, I'm a little bit fed up because sometimes you might get an interpreter employed to work with a show, but you wouldn't have the funding to provide the marketing for that, to get the information out to the, the deaf community, mm -hmm. and then they would wonder where their deaf audience were. And so it's not going to be always obvious that a, a place, just because they're booking interpreters, will then um, be made open in a way to, to the deaf community. So I think it's really important to consider all those aspects. Brilliant. And uh, <laughs> I think the last thing that we talked about in this sort of category was the idea of empathy training. Do you want to talk a bit about, about your thoughts on that? <laughs> Well, basically, yeah, I think there's disability awareness training that I previously went on. And it felt good being part of that session, but that was only until the point where we actually had to pretend that we had a disability. For example, you know, if you're, if you're talking about people that are, you know, people that are deaf or blind or wheelchair users, um, it's all very well discussing those subjects, but then when you start saying, okay, if we can have a volunteer to, to come out and pretend um, that they are one of those categories so that we know how to, for example, treat a deaf person, you know, or asking me as a deaf person pretending how to be blind and it just felt really bizarre. And then you have actual deaf people there in the room sometimes, you have actual blind people there in the room sometimes, but you're not asking them. 
I think the, the point is that you can do training without that element. Uh -huh. Really, yeah. <laughs> and, and does it really make empathy or create empathy when you're terrified? Because what, when I did blind awareness training, they made us become blind. We had to put on these glasses and you could choose between different kinds of blindness. And then be guided around by your co-worker who knows nothing about guiding blind people. And they would take you out into the street and around, say, a theatre. and and it was terrifying, and so that's the idea people get, being disabled is terrifying, <laughs> as opposed to learning anything about what a blind person's life is like, you know, and that most blind people would actually, you know, know their way around. Yeah, and I think, you know, with, with deaf people, for example, growing up as a deaf person, it would be very different from someone who had therefore become deaf. So, <laughs> you know, if for somebody to try and experience that, they're never going to experience it in the same way as I have. And it feels almost very patronising, you know, especially when people start saying, I've been through empathy training, I can understand where you're going with that, you know, and it's feel like, oh, come on, like, let's get a hanky out, everybody weeping over this, you know. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. I suffered. I suffered for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I think that was like most of the things we were going to cover. Is there anything else you want to add about the beginnings of... I think there's one more uh, yeah. thing I want to talk about is the oh, yes. capital <laughs> slash small C right. diff. You used to always say in marketing that if you're marketing to deaf, you know, deaf people, you'd be wanting to put D slash, capital D slash, small D. However, at the moment there's a huge debate around the use of the, that term um, because a lot of people are saying it divides the community and other people are seeing, saying that the big D deaf is about BSL using <coughs> deaf pride community. And the small d deaf is maybe people who don't consider themselves to be part of the deaf community or they don't consider themselves to be using BSL as a first language. Um, it could be somebody who's a hearing aid user or a cochlear implant user. And I just think there are these divides being created. Mm -hmm. Everybody's deaf. You know, everybody that is deaf is deaf. <laughs> um, I think we should keep an eye on the marketing in the future. Just it's important being aware that that's, that discussion is happening just now and we, we, we need to look ahead to where the language goes with that. And I think that that's a, a good, uh, it's a good signifier as to why you should maintain your dialogue with the deaf community <laughs> so that you know what the changes yeah, are that are yeah. around in the deaf community and it's not just that one size fits all. I, and I think that's something that we talked about um, as well as this idea of constantly checking in with deaf people and um, not assuming because you've watched B in this video that now everything has been solved. <laughs> or, or that um, if you know one deaf person, you know all of the deaf people. I'm certainly not you know, the, an academic in the whole range of deafness either. <laughs> um, and, and especially not to um, basically listen to hearing people's opinions on these things and only a community of like written English, which is where I think in some ways you were indicating to me this D, capital D slash small D has really taken hold. It's in written communities as opposed to in signing communities. Because there's no real, we were talking about, there's not really a sign for D slash D except to literally spell it out, <laughs> which is very different than having a yeah, sign. Uh -huh, yeah, and the, yeah, I'd the idea of big D slash small D. Uh, the idea of capital something is very is a very English term like capital B bitch. <laughs> you know, you cover you know, that's not really you know, it doesn't come from sign language exactly. So I think there's a lot to think about in that and especially to just hope. I do know that a lot of um deaf people who are <laughs> who feel very empowered by their deafness and 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 proud and proud of the, and proud of their deafness and <laughs> would class themselves in the capital D deaf uh -huh. area as well. So I think it's just an ongoing debate. I uh, yeah, and there's a a huge long history that goes with that that we encourage everyone to read about and watch <laughs> videos about elsewhere. <laughs>